So let's talk about the lore in Doom 3. This game is possibly the one game in the franchise that seems to get put aside by some portion of the fanbase. Possibly because the gameplay was slowed down, which decreased the traditional action and speed seen in the classic Doom games. You could also say it's one Doom game where you end up running from the demons and not towards them. This comment is probably pointing out that some demons in Doom 3 have more movement speed and agility than the player. So in some situations, you have to run backwards while planning out your next move or lining up your shots. But is Doom 3 linked to any story of the other Doom games? During a documentary about the making of Doom 3, Tim Willits, a lead designer at its software at the time, said this, The story in Doom takes place as if the first two never happened. So it's very important that fans realize this is not Doom 3 after Doom 2 Hell on Earth. This is Doom 3, whereas Doom, Doom 2 never happened. While some things in Doom 3 have references to classic Doom, and some things in Doom 3 are seen in Doom 2016, that might be where it ends. Just some things are placed as Easter eggs. According to the lore of Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, it made no connection to how Doom 3 fits into that story. The story of the Doom Slayer is linked to Doom, Doom 2, Doom 64, Doom 2016, and Doom Eternal. So this might leave Doom 3 in its own story, timeline, or universe. Perhaps in the future, we might get some content that does explain how Doom 3 is linked to the story of the Slayer, if at all. Because Doom 3 tends to stick out from the other games. So for now, I want to bring up a few videos I did covering the lore in the game. This video will cover things like a demon weapon cut from the original Doom game, the alien laser known as the Unmaker, the Soul Cube which might be linked to the Martian people, the artifact in Doom Resurrection of Evil, what happened to the Martian people during the demon invasion, the Cherub demons, and the full story of Malcolm Betruger, who became the Maledict. Even if Doom 3's action is different than the other games, I did enjoy its deep story and change of pace. There's a lot of things in Doom 3 that go unnoticed unless you stop and really look around. So I hope you enjoy this video. I will leave timestamps to make it easier to locate a topic of interest. Now let's get started. What are the ancient Martian weapons in Doom? Aside from the standard military weapons we see in the Doom games, there have been a few weapons taken from demons and ancient Martians from long ago. Back during the development of the original Doom game, an early version of the game had a weapon called the Dark Claw. It looked like the claw of a demon that casted a cloud of tortured essence. It made no sound and could be casted at any location, making it a very deadly weapon. The Dark Claw is said to feed on human souls. When it kills possessed humans or demons, it allows the weapon to feed. Although this weapon was never in the final version of the game, some game files resembling its description can be found in the Alpha 0.4 and 0.5 WAD files. This item was listed from within the Doom Bible, along with items like the Heart of Lothar and the Captain's Hand, which were simply meant to be special keys. Another weapon from the Doom Bible was the Unmaker, also known as the Alien Laser. It was also intended to be in the original Doom game, but was removed. It later showed up in Doom 64. The Doom Bible says that this weapon was best used on demons, it was mediocre on demon-controlled humans, and it was least effective on tech demons. The Unmaker shoots a single laser when it is found, and it can be upgraded to fire more lasers with a greater rate of fire and more power. The method of upgrading is by locating the demon keys. There is also another function to the demon keys in the game. During the final battle, there will be three portals that spawn demons. Each portal can be closed if the player has located a demon key for a total of three portals that can be closed. This would make the final battle much easier without having to deal with all the enemies that spawn from the doors. Now this weapon was originally supposed to be white in color and it's made entirely of bones. And just like the Dark Claw, these two weapons were meant to feed on the souls of the creatures you killed. But this feature was removed and later used for something else in another Doom game. The Soul Cube was seen in Doom 3. 
It is an ancient Martian artifact that feeds on the souls of the enemies you kill. When it is used on a target, it will transfer the enemy's life force and heal the person using the soul cube. A total of five souls must be collected until the soul cube can be used. It is also stated to be the only weapon that can defeat Hell's mightiest warrior, the Cyber Demon. History says that the soul cube was created by magic when the Martians fought against the demons. One hero fought them all off, while the survivors were sacrificed for the soul cube's power. He was able to seal the portal, but did not survive the battle. The soul cube was buried close to his tomb. After it was found by archaeologists, Dr. Betruger took the soul cube and entered the portal to hell. The soul cube would then be seen later on in battle right before the Guardian boss, and the words, save us, can be heard. Once the Guardian is dead, the soul cube is acquired, and it speaks these words, we are many, we are one, we are the Praelionthor, you know us as the soul cube. Free us from our eternal prison, and we will help you. Vanquish our enemies, and we grow stronger. Listen for our call, and then free us, to smite down the evil. Perhaps the name Praelianthor is the name of the Martian people from long ago. Now after the Soul Cube kills the Cyber Demon, it is seen to fly into the portal and it closes. It is not clear if the Soul Cube was trapped in Hell or if it was destroyed. Even though it was seen in the Doom game from 2016, this might have just been an easter egg. The last item on this list is something called the Artifact. It also goes by the name of the Heart of Hell or the Bloodstone. It is seen in Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil. Although not a Martian weapon, it was listed as a demonic weapon used by the creatures of Hell. This item will use the souls of humans as fuel before it can be used. It was discovered when UAC returned to Mars, and a marine accidentally awoke the artifact when he enters a chamber where it's kept. This artifact also acts as a portal to Hell. This allowed the demons to return, and at the same time, Dr. Betruger, who has now become the Maledict, has sent three special demons to retrieve it. This ancient artifact has the ability to absorb the powers of the three Hellhunter demons, each one granting a special power to the artifact upon its death. When all three Hellhunters are killed, the artifact will grant the player the ability to slow down time, have increased physical strength, and be immune to all damage for a short time. The artifact is used at the end of the game to defeat Maledict, but in the process, it seems the artifact was also destroyed. But in the 2016 Doom game, there was a beating heart that can be found on Titan's realm. Perhaps this might be a reference to the artifact. So that was a look at some of the more obscure weapons in Doom not originating from humans. Did you know about these weapons and which one is your favorite? Put your answer in the comment section. What happened to the Martian people on Mars in Doom 3? The story in Doom 3 revolved around discoveries on Mars. For a long time, scientists had theorized that life on Mars could have been a possibility at some time. But during an excavation, they uncovered a chamber from another civilization. They were covered in symbols and glyphs. Through a translation of the tablets they uncovered, they were able to decipher some information. The research facility on Mars had kept data and video files about all their findings. This is what they found. The ancient people who were considered as Martians were seen as bipedal lifeforms. Their level of technology was beyond what humans had access to. The carvings on the stone tablets were cut with an extreme amount of precision that we could not replicate. Their society was based around a social stature and structure. Another site would include temples, burial sites, and personal artifacts that were sent back to Earth for study. Their prized artifact was located in Site 3. It was the Soul Cube also labeled as Artifact U1. And according to the story written on the stone tablets, this long-lost civilization was culturally advanced and their technology was described as mystical or magical. The Soul Cube could not be scanned by X-ray or gamma rays. They were not able to determine its mass, atomic makeup, or weight. The strange symbols on the Soul Cube could not be deciphered, but they did find that its thermographic readings are a constant 98.8 degrees Fahrenheit. The stone tablets also explained that the ancient civilization was wiped out in a cataclysmic event. When the forces of hell invaded their dimension, they had to use their most powerful weapon. The souls of their people were sacrificed to power the soul cube. This weapon was used by a single hero that fought against the demons of hell. 
He did manage to seal the portal, but did not survive the battle. The soul cube was buried near the hero's burial chamber, along with other artifacts. This ancient civilization had also illustrated the mathematical equation for teleportation. The UAC would use this data to create the Delta teleportation devices, but their portal would open a passage to hell. More information on a stone tablet also suggested that the remaining survivors may have teleported somewhere else. Although their location could not be found, it did reference a map that is yet to be located. They also recovered another set of artifacts that are different from the Soul Cube, but unique in their own way. But they have not deciphered the glyphs on them yet. There was a theory that humans could be descendants of these Martians. It's possible some survivors fled to Earth after the war against the demons of Hell. The face on the Soul Cube is seen to resemble the grey aliens seen in science fiction. We are unsure if this was the face of the ancient Martians or just an image of something else. Now, in a Doom game from 2016, there were some excavated stone structures with glowing hieroglyphics. This could have been linked to the events of Doom 3. More evidence to back up this theory is from a stone tablet in Doom 3. It shows the design of what looks like the Titan creature that fought against the Doom Slayer. The Titan was mentioned in a Doom game from 2016, so it's possible the two storylines could be connected in a small way. The Martians could have been named the Pralian Thor, since that's what the Soul Cube says when you find it. It says this, We are many. We are one. We are the Pralian Thor. This could be referring to all the Martian souls that were sacrificed to power the Soul Cube. There is very little information about the Martian people in Doom 3, but I hope you still enjoy this video. What are the Cherubs in the video game Doom 3? And how does it fit into the lore of Doom? When Doom 3 was released in 2004, they brought back classic favorite enemies like the Pinky, Imp, Cacodemon, Hell Knight, and a few others. While their appearance was slightly changed, you could still see the similarities to the original version. And this was based on how each enemy functioned. You could tell this was an Imp, this was a Pinky, and this was a Cacodemon. Each version of Doom seems to introduce new enemies. They vary in appearance, origin, and their purpose. But during production, the team started to bring in new types of enemies, and one of them was probably the creepiest enemy in the game, at least to me. Here we have the Cherub, or maybe it's pronounced Cherub. Anyways, this was a new monster in the Doom universe. But unlike the other creatures that take on a demonic form from the base of an adult human body, the Cherub is very different. Its appearance is of a human baby, but with many changes to its body. On its back, we can see insect-like wings, which can generate a buzzing sound when they are active. Their eyes have changed in color, and their teeth are now pointy and sharp. If we look at their limbs, the arms have changed into large claws, used for tearing away at their prey. It has no legs in its lower body, but it's been replaced with what looks like the abdomen of a fly. This sight alone is not only frightening, but very disturbing. The cherubs will mostly attack in groups. While their bodies seem to be too heavy to fly, they can still crawl and also leap towards a target while slashing away with their claws. Now, there is very little history about the cherub. They are mostly seen in places where the mancubi are found. Some might think they are the offspring of the mancubi, but there's no real data on that claim. However, there's a part of dialogue in Doom 3 that does mention someone's baby. Here's the audio. Come here. Follow me. Come on, hurry. They took my baby. There's been some speculation that this could have been a human mother, or perhaps it was the Vagary boss. It could have used its telepathic powers to fool or scare the Marine. 
I have covered the Vagri boss before, and the creature on its abdomen seems to resemble the Mancubi. One theory is that the Vagri was once human, and after it mutated, it took on the role of giving birth to Mancubi. But here's the problem. Vagari is the queen of the trites. So does she give birth to trites or Mancubi? It's all really confusing because now we might have three creatures linked to the Vagari. One might think they are not so dangerous, but given the chance, they can overwhelm a target. The Cherubs have fairly low damage resistance, so it's best to use a rapid fire weapon to deal with them. In Doom 3 Resurrection of Evil, you can use the Grabber weapon to hold and launch them, which is fatal to them. During the Lost Mission, the Vagri returns, but this time she is accompanied by Cherubs. Now, the name Cherub was taken from the angelic beings in some religions. These ones were mainly seen with four heads, but in modern Western Christianity, their design was simplified to angelic infants with wings. Here, they were called Puti. Now, during the development of Doom 3, the Cherub had a few modifications to its design by changing its legs, arms, and face until the final version was completed. What is the story of Dr. Malcolm Betruger in Doom 3? He was listed as the research director of a facility on Mars, which was owned by the Union Aerospace Corporation. He possessed genius-level intellect, which he used on various projects throughout his time in the research facility. His obsession with science would change his personality, coming off as being arrogant, cold, and narcissistic. He would take great pride in his discoveries, and sometimes even risking human lives in the name of science, something that did not seem to bother him. He oversaw the archaeological dig on Mars, and various sites were discovered. Site 1 consisted of chambers and tunnels. The walls were covered in glyphs, which were carved into stone. This proved the existence of life on Mars at some point in time. Site 2 would mostly serve as a burial ground, a temple, and individual artifacts. This area was documented and cleared out. But Site 3 is where they located the artifact listed as U1, also known as the Soul Cube. It was buried along with other artifacts. In the same room, they would also come across a burial chamber of a very large being, and some unique stone tablets. The first tablet gave them records about teleportation. This led to the creation of the Delta Labs teleportation device later in the story. The second and third tablet tells a story of war, how the demons invaded their planet and almost wiped out this ancient civilization, but the entire race was sacrificed to achieve victory. The fourth tablet says the essence of each individual is captured inside the soul cube. It was used by their mightiest warrior and he banished the invading demons. There is a section of the fourth tablet that is left out, but a piece of it was later discovered. It goes into detail about the invading enemies, and it indicates the remaining survivors may have teleported somewhere else, but it seems to reference a map they have not located yet. The images they found in the ceiling of one room is supposed to represent our solar system. This map is located in a place called the Room of Stars. There is a clear indication that any survivors could have teleported to Earth. If that were true, then we might be their descendants. Other artifacts were located during the excavation, but they are still being researched to uncover their secrets. This ancient civilization was listed as being mystic because of the Soul Cube's unique properties. According to Richard Myers in The Lost Mission, he says UAC researchers found a Martian teleportation device. It was non-functional, but the researchers learned enough after decoding the wall carvings. The teleporter became operational in short distances. As their technology advanced, they were able to create a portal to another dimension. Richard was able to hack into Betruger's personal logs. He left notes on his interest in the occult and how to harness evil powers. Betruger's log also said the demons contacted him in his dreams. They offered him unlimited power if he helped the demons reclaim Earth. Since there was no functional teleporter straight to Earth from Mars, he would help the demons invade Mars, which is one step closer. Dr. Betruger would oversee the work on the teleportation device, and when conducting some experiments, they uncovered a new dimension. When they sent a probe through, it brought back images of unknown creatures, the first proof of life beyond Earth. Betruger would start sending research teams through the portal, with the intent on capturing some of the creatures. Some beings were brought back, but at the cost of human lives. But the team who did come back alive would end up being affected in some strange way. Their mind was poisoned or corrupted, 
and later on they went insane. An audio log by Dr. Pierce Rogers says this other dimension was in fact hell, and the creatures brought back for research were demons. The medical supervisor named Peter Raleigh left behind an audio log of his observation of this outbreak of dementia. Subjects that returned from their time in hell would become infected in some way. They suffered from paranoia and delusions. He tried many forms of drugs, but everything failed. He assumed it was a pathogen, but he could not find anything biological that would cause this. This pathogen would attack the higher brain functions. Over time, they would lose their ability of communication and rational thinking. Subjects would become violent and aggressive. Then, the physical changes would begin. Sometime later, Petruger would make an unscheduled trip through the portal and he took the soul cube with him. It was the only weapon that could stop the demons, and now it was left in hell and protected by the guardian demon. With the soul cube now in possession of the demons, they were free to go through the portal. When Petruga returned from hell, his mind was corrupted, he was changing, and was given evil powers. The board would receive multiple reports of strange things happening on the Mars base. Things like unexplained accidents, weird sounds in dark places, unauthorized experiments, and strange cases of mental illness. They received a complaint by Elizabeth McNeil, who used to work for Dr. Petruger, until she was reassigned to a position on Earth. She became concerned about Petruger's research direction. There's also the issue of the safety and the sanity of anyone who remains on Mars. Dr. Petruger tries to persuade Elliot Swan through an email that coming to Mars for a review is a waste of time. His research is yielding outstanding results and he won't allow his work to be compromised. The board is more interested in teleportation technology but not in Petruger's use of it to reach another dimension. So they sent counselor Elliot Swan to do a full review of all the work Petruger was doing. When Swan lands on Mars, he brings his personal bodyguard Campbell and a marine that was sent to replace another recruit. Petruger then has a conversation with Swan about the strange reports in the facility. He tries to explain that these accidents could have been avoided if he had a bigger budget and a larger workforce. The board is only interested in having a product that they could sell. They don't care about science or newfound discoveries. And so Petruger tells him, don't worry, they'll get their product. As Counselor Swan tells him that he will need full access including Delta Labs, Petruger agrees but warns him, just stay out of my way. Amazing things will happen here soon, you just wait. It turns out that a lot of staff members are requesting a transfer off of Mars. With so many deaths, unauthorized research, and strange creatures and Delta Labs, it seems something strange is happening on Mars. As the Marine of the story reports to Sergeant Kelly, he's given orders to locate a missing scientist. When he's located, he tries to send out a distress signal. He's fully aware of the danger that's coming to Mars, but the signal does not get sent. Then, an unknown shockwave comes through the portal from hell, and it changes most humans into zombies. As he fights his way through the base, he is tricked by Sergeant Kelly to retrieve a military transmission card. Swan does warn the Marine to not send the signal, because those creatures could get a hold of those ships. The signal goes through eventually, either by the Marine or by Betruger himself later on. Swan goes to Delta Labs in hopes of stopping the portal. This is when Sergeant Kelly orders the Marine to go there as well. Betruger was then shown to control other demons, transform humans into demons, throw some type of projectile, and maybe even use telepathy or astral projection. He found a way of speaking to others without his body actually being in the same location. By now, Petruger was heavily influenced by the forces of hell. He later contacted the Marine and admitted to helping the forces of hell come to Mars. When the distress signal was sent out, those same ships coming to Mars would be taken by the demons to reach Earth. He also mentions that he has the soul cube in hell and the Marine will never find it. While the portal from Mars can be closed, it is not closed on the side of hell so the demons continue coming through. The marine reaches Delta Labs and enters the portal. Our hero arrives in a place surrounded by lava, stone, and fire, but in the distance we see statues of demonic faces. He is truly in hell. The sounds of suffering and tortured souls can be heard in the distance. Whatever this place is, no man has ventured this far and came back alive. But the marine fears nothing and continues onward. As he ventures on, his surroundings become stranger and more twisted. Hell is no place for a mere mortal. 
it is bound to the wicked and evil spirits. Near the darkest pits of hell, he finds the soul cube. It calls out for you by saying, save us. But as you reach for it, the guardian appears, a giant brute of a demon. Its thick hide cannot be penetrated, so your weapons are useless on its body. But as it sends out seekers, they will focus their light onto you, as to guide the guardian to your location. The soul cube speaks out to you, informing you of the guardian's weakness. Destroying the seekers will cause the guardian to create an orb to spawn more seekers. Destroy this orb and the guardian shall fall. And now the soul cube is yours to claim. In all its splendor and mystery, it speaks to you. We are many. We are one. We are the Praelian Thor. You know us as the soul cube. Free us from our eternal prison and we will help you. Vanquish our enemies and we grow stronger. Listen for our call and then free us to smite down the evil. When he closes the portal and returns to Mars, Betruger contacts him and says that another Hellgate has opened up, and this one is located at the dig site where the artifacts and stone tablets were found. If this Hellgate is not closed, then millions of demons will come through. Without a second thought, our hero heads there. Now it's possible that Sergeant Kelly was working with Betruger all along, because he was persistent in sending out the signal to Earth. Even if you cancel the signal from going out, Petruger sends it out later on. At some point in the story, he was turned into some type of demon. His lower body is replaced with some type of tank-like vehicle, while the upper body is attached to machinery with a sharp claw for a right arm, and a BFG is mounted on his shoulder. It's unclear why Sergeant Kelly wanted to send out a distress signal to Earth, some might say he was working for Betruger. One theory is around the idea that his mind is being controlled by Betruger, or his actions to call for reinforcements could have just been a natural military procedure. But his transformation into Sabaoth could have happened after he ambushed Jack Campbell and stole the BFG from him, because the corridor Campbell was in was too narrow for Sabaoth's true form. You would also find Elliot Swan dying, and he says he's no longer human, so this could mean Sergeant Kelly was starting to transform, but did not have the tank vehicle attached to his body yet. The Marine then makes his way to the caverns, while still fighting the demons that are coming after him. But unknown to him, as he makes his way into the lower areas, something is waiting for him. When he locates the Hellgate, he comes across the Cyber Demon, a giant hellish beast, the merging of flesh and steel, a true image of evil armed with a rocket launcher and thick skin. The cyber demon cannot be damaged by conventional weapons. Instead, the soul cube is used many times until the beast finally succumbs to its injuries. It falls over and dies. The cyber demon is defeated. The soul cube then flies into the hell gate and closes it. But at the same time, it is unknown if the soul cube was destroyed or was lost in hell. As a rescue team arrives on Mars, they search for survivors, but they only find one, the lone marine. Somehow, he made his way out of hell and back on Mars. And as to the whereabouts of Dr. Betruger, his body was not found. But during the ending, his head is seen attached to a tongue of a giant, dragon-like demon. Betruger has turned into the Maledict. The ending closes with him flying around in hell. The battle is not over. Now, there's a collectible in Doom 3 that mentions a music album called The Head on My Tongue, and the band's name is Hellish Dragons. This could be seen as a reference towards Betruger becoming the Maledict with his head on its tongue. When it comes to the meaning of Betruger, in German it means deceiver, cheater, or swindler, a very fitting name for the main villain of Doom 3. But that was not the end of the story. It was continued in the expansion to Doom 3 called Resurrection of Evil, so the incident on Mars ended on November 15th of 2145. The facility was destroyed and only one survivor was located. On May 1st of 2146, an orbital probe picks up a strange signal coming from the abandoned Mars site. And as of August 8th in 2146, the UAC decides to continue its Mars research program, but this time Dr. Elizabeth McNeil is chosen to lead the primary assessment team. The team that is sent in happens to uncover an artifact hidden within some type of temple. One marine ends up touching the artifact which looks like a heart 
and this wipes out the rest of his team, leaving him alone. This also triggers another event. This opens a new portal from Mars to Hell. The nightmare has started all over again. Now ruling over Hell, Maledict senses the new portal and says, Hell reaches out for what is ours. We have been unbound. The artifact contains unbelievable power and can open portals to other dimensions. This is why Maledict wants it. And so, he orders three Hellhunters to locate the Marine and bring back the artifact. Each Hellhunter possesses a special ability, and when they are defeated, the artifact will absorb that power. And it turns out, the ancient civilization on Mars had battled against these Hunters in the past, because images of the Hunters were carved into stone tablets. Another tablet is later scanned, and some of its secrets are revealed. It has the same writings as the other stone tablets. It mentions the invasion of the demons and the ancient civilization, and this artifact is also a weapon of tremendous power. It acts like a gateway from hell. It must be returned to hell and destroyed. The ancient civilization was not able to do this, so it was locked away, hoping nobody would ever find it. Maledict confronts the marine at the end of the story, and after a grueling battle, Maledict seems unfazed by the marine's weapons, so he flies down and grabs the marine with his mouth, then slams him on the floor. He demands for the artifact to be returned, so the marine does just that, but instead he shoves it into Maledict's mouth. This results in the destruction of the demon, and only his human skull is left behind. The name Maledict comes from various Latin words. Maledictus is Latin for cursed or damned. Malediction is the intent of bringing about evil and destruction, and maledicir means to speak evil. All of these seem to fit Vitruger and his maledict form just perfectly. According to the book The Making of Doom 3, it says General Hayden was an insane military antagonist. He ended up being cut from the game and Betruger was made into the main villain of the story. The face and voice of Betruger could have been an homage to the movie character Hannibal Lecter. So that covers the story of Dr. Malcolm Betruger and the Maledict in Doom 3. It's a very long story, but I did find it interesting. I also liked how there was an ancient civilization and how the stone tablets told a story from long ago. Most of the lore to this game was left behind in collectibles that are displayed in your PDA, either through audio and video logs or by emails. The Soul Cube also made an appearance in Doom 2016, but only showed up as a possible Easter egg and you could not interact with it. So if you enjoyed this video, I'll appreciate a thumbs up rating. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching. My name is Carlos, and I'll see you in the next video.